Hey ladies, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're going to be talking about homeschooling and lots of other topics. I have got Monica Swanson here. She is a popular blogger at monicaswanson.com. She's the host of the Monica Swanson podcast, formerly the Boy Mom podcast, which I love, and oh. author of Boy Mom, Raising Amazing, and her newest book that we're going to be talking about, Becoming Homeschoolers. So Monica, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much. Great to be here. Okay, so we're going to just, we're going to dive right in because I've got lots of questions to awesome. ask you. So you just wrote a book called Becoming Homeschoolers. Mm -hmm. So why don't you, why don't you share a little bit about you, your family, your story, and how you came to write a book about homeschooling? Yes, great question. Because a couple, even a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have imagined that I would have written this book. I... Uh, I'm an unlikely homeschool mom, grew up in the Pacific Northwest, as did my husband in the public schools, he just got married, and we've been married now 28 years, so we are, we're getting old, but we really never had conversations about school or what our kids would do. We both love the Lord. Uh, our faith was super important to us in our early married years. My husband um, went to medical school, and then we came to Hawaii for residency 23 years ago, and started our kids off in a private Christian preschool. And um, that was when we started to look at all the options and like, what do we have available here in Hawaii? And in general, what do we want our kids' lives to look like? Private school's expensive. Hawaii's really expensive. Like, is this sustainable? By then we had three kids. And that's when I tell the story in my book that my oldest son came home from first grade where he was still in the same private school. And he, um, he said, mom, what if you homeschooled me next year? And that really hadn't crossed my mind. I knew a few homeschoolers. I respected them, but I just didn't see myself. I, I couldn't wait to get all the kids in school so I could enjoy a little me time and like live that life I'd always kind of just imagined. And so when he asked that, I was like, whoa, you know, I brushed it off really quick. And then it just kind of stuck. And over the next months, pondered it and uh, decided it was worth a shot and convinced my husband who was not excited about the idea initially. Um, but by the end of that first year, we were both really just hooked. I mean, we just saw so many things about it. And so then years later, I started blogging, started writing to encourage parents, families. I wrote Boy Mom, Raising Amazing, and um, just really wanted to support families in general wanting to cheer people on, always wanting to build that bridge and encourage everyone, uh, Christians and those who might not be Christians, but might be open to hearing like, what makes my family work? And it was at the end of writing, sorry, this is a long answer, but you're getting the full story now. Yeah. <laughs> it was at the end of writing my book, Raising Amazing, that I was in a chapter talking about how our kids spend their days and just encouraging families, like, let's be intentional. Think about the ways your kids spend their days because whether or not the days take a long time now, one day you will look back and go, wow, that mm -hmm. flew by. And what you're doing every day right now will be the story your kids take with them into the world. That is their childhood. So as I was doing that, started a short section on homeschooling. And that short section just got longer and longer and longer. And my editor sent it back to me and was like, I think you should save this for your next book on homeschooling. And that's when I was like, whoa, maybe I could do oh. that. <laughs> I could talk about homeschooling. This has been our true experience. I've graduated three, mm -hmm. two got college scholarships. And as we record, the second one just graduated from college and they both got job offers straight out of college. So I'm like, okay, we've done something right. Even though I never felt like the professional mm -hmm. homeschool mom, it worked for us. And I can encourage people who think they don't have what it takes. Yes, you do have what it takes. So that's the big story. It's really encouraging. Um, for, for our family, we're a little bit different. My husband was homeschooled K through 12. So he, oh, were, wow. you know, in, in that way, we're second generation. I went yeah. to public school, had okay. did do nothing, but being able to draw on my husband's experience with my mother-in-law, it mm. has been so, so confident boosting to be able to yes. see that. Like my husband is so smart, um, got accepted into a college with a 2% acceptance rate. Right. Like everything I just, I always felt like, oh yeah, of course, like we can do this and it, it can turn out amazing. Yes. But I talked to so many women who never envisioned homeschooling, who just mm -hmm. like you who just were yeah. like, 
oh, or, you know, the past four years, maybe they realized they want to start homeschooling yeah. or look into it. Mm, and it right. can feel so hard when you have no experience, your family yeah. hasn't done it. And you're yep. like, what is this even supposed to look like? Totally. And so I love that encouragement that you can do it. And, yeah. you know, with a little bit of research. Yes, absolutely. My husband and I were just talking about that uh, just this week, how so many people just the what however you are raised it's just kind of ingrained in your anticipation of what it's going to look like for you to raise kids yeah. so it's really hard if you haven't seen it and done it yourself to imagine a homeschool lifestyle but yeah it's not it's not as bad as most people would think <laughs> so let's talk for a minute to that mom who or that those parents who are considering hey maybe do we do this crazy thing called homeschooling? Mm-hmm. How does a family start start to figure out if homeschooling is going to be a good fit? Yeah, I mean, I think that that a lot of people out there have that nudge or feel that desire, but just fear takes over and they don't feel like they have what it takes. So I think a lot of it is just addressing each individual fear or concern one at a time. And that's kind of how I open the book. I talk about, you know, I I do the little quiz at the beginning where I'm like, ask yourself these questions. If if any of these are a yes, then you should definitely look into homeschooling, at least give it a consideration. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that addressing each concern and fear and weighing out the pros and cons, I mean, nothing is perfect. I'm not going to tell anyone my boys had a perfect education, but I think we need to weigh out the pros and cons. And like you said, especially in light of the past few years, there's a lot to consider. Um, and, and so I think, I think it's worthwhile to check it out kind of like with faith issues, you know, for my friends who are not followers of Jesus, I'm like, well, at least I think it's worth looking into because the stakes are high. And so at least you should ask the right questions and get some good answers. Yeah. I like that a lot. You know, I, I just had a question the other day from a mom in our community and she was saying, I've never looked into homeschooling. I'm starting to look into it, but I live in Colorado. Is it even possible here? And Colorado (laughs) is not a super hard state to homeschool in. I mean, you know, it's just, I think people don't realize the resources that we have today that yes, if you have the 50 states, you a 100% can homeschool, but we just don't know what you don't know what you don't know. And it can feel so overwhelming. And so I always tell people start with like the research. And yep. just asking questions and just, yes. you know, you don't have to have all the answers. You don't even have to know what all the questions are. Just start yeah. and kind of slowly go through it and pieces kind of start to fall into place. Yes. And I'll add to that. I mean, I think that's how I feel because I feel like I honest to goodness graduated my sons without knowing much. I didn't mm-hmm. know all the resources that were out there. We just did like my goal was to do at least as good as what they'd get in a public school. Literally, I wasn't looking to give them a magical homeschool experience. My boys were surfers. They were into so many other hobbies and interests that I was like, I'm not going to overcomplicate school. But for the sake of my book, I know there are parents out there who are like, I'm not going to do it until all my questions are answered. Mm -hmm. So I did all the research and there's literally a resource list that will point you to what you need, whatever your question is. If you're a single mom, if you're working while you're homeschooling, if you have kids with special needs, every concern you might have, there's a resource for it. And I put them all in the book. So I'm trying to make it as practical as I can for people. (laughs) Yeah, it's, that's really helpful. And, and I know, and you know, that homeschooling days don't always look like this magical Mm. fairyland. And a lot of times there are some really incredible homeschool accounts on, on, on Pinterest and on Instagram, Mm -hmm. but they can make it look so idyllic and so calm and so beautiful. (laughs) You think, Oh, I could never do that in my household ever. And so it's so important to have these real life conversations of like school can be loud and it can be messy and there can be, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not this picture perfect thing all the time, but it still can be exactly what it needs to be. Absolutely. Very well said. Couldn't agree more. So pick your brain now is some tips on getting started. So let's talk about first, you know, the parent who has a preschooler, a kindergartner, they're right at that beginning and they're thinking, okay, we're exploring homeschool. Where do you suggest a parent who's got preschool, kindergartner, where do they start? Preschool, kindergartner. Well, I think one of the most important things is just your mindset towards it all to just really realize, especially in those early years, most of the way through elementary school, your kids don't need a lot of academics. The the school day can be very short. So start by taking a deep breath and just going, 
this doesn't have to a look like it would in a traditional school. They don't have to be in a room for eight hours. Um, and really the freedom you give them and the, the just secure environment, the opportunity to play, those should be your goals. So it's really a shift in your mindset, which is hard. It's, it's, to this day, I still have a 13 year old and I often try to make his day look like it would if he sat in a school room because it's just hard if that's all you're used to. But I think first challenging yourself to really shift your mindset. And then um, and then next, I have like three steps in my book for getting started. One is just find out the legal requirements for homeschooling. And that's super simple. I put a link in the book, but HSLDA is a website that has state by state, everything you need to know. And it's typically for most states, really simple. There's not a whole lot you need to know, but go ahead and check it out. That should put you at ease. And then the second thing, which I think people make, you know, a little too big of a deal about, but it's necessary is to choose your curriculum, figure out what you want to do. Uh, preschool and kindergarten, you don't need much. You don't have to order a thousand dollar curriculum. You can start really simple, but if it makes you feel better, find out what's out there. Um, you know, I've got again links to different places where you can search for curriculums, but keep it simple because no doubt you and I would probably agree most of us switch curriculums a few times throughout our kids' schooling years. Yeah. So just start with something. There's ways you can figure out, you know, do you want to be more book centered? Do you want to be more you do need to use videos because you have multiple kids or you're working. There's different options, but um, but just start. And then as you go, you're going to figure out, oh, this works, this doesn't. And um, and the third thing I'd say is definitely find um, find a community if you can, um, whether you find a homeschool co-op or just a couple friends. It may have to be online depending on where you live, but find other people that you can talk to because it really helps to have that support. Yeah, I like I love those three steps. I think going back to the first one you were talking about, we do tend to overcomplicate the little gears so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can complicate mm-hmm. all the ages, but yeah. I, you know, I always tell people when they're real stressed about finding what science do you use for first grade? Yes. I always say, think back to your first grade. Do you oh, remember man. the science that you learned? Do you remember right. the biology? And also guess what? You're going to repeat that again in middle school. You're going to oh, repeat yeah. Again, in high school, like we can take that stress off that the first grader is learning all the right things at all the right time. But when we're starting out, we just, we want to do right by our kids. We want to make sure that we're educating them well. And so it can end up feeling so stressful, but learning from experienced moms who've been there, who've graduated their high school kids. That's so good to hear that perspective too, that we can, we can keep things simple and still do a good job with our kids. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's talk about then, where do we get started if you're pulling an older student out Mm. of a traditional school setting? So there's a lot of people who have fifth, sixth, eighth graders, and they're going, "Uh uh-oh, we need to homeschool for a whole variety of reasons. Where do you even start? Yes. Um, Again, let's start with a deep breath. (laughs) It's going to be okay. (laughs) It's going to be okay. There's tons of support. And once again, there's there's more time in a day and in a school year than you need. Like you're going to be all right. If you if you come to October and you realize you need to pull your kid. My son, we've switched curriculums in the late fall and he doesn't finish that. It's OK. It's all going to be OK. Yeah. But um, but certainly by high school, I would say it's a little more important that you know what you're doing. So middle school, you've still got some wiggle room, but you want to jump in. You want to give them a good foundation. Some people say, you know, some homeschool experts would say, oh, they don't need, you know, true curriculum all the way into middle school. I get a little a little uh, more cautious in that area because I'm like, I don't want them to die in high school and I want them to have a rigorous high school education. So middle school, I think it's good to check some boxes and again, grab a curriculum. There are curriculums that cover everything. You know, we've used things like a Becca where you can literally get the entire curriculum, one price. The kids have a video teacher they watch and then they do book work. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There are so many big box curriculums that come all in one. Um, by high school, you want to have a, a bit of a plan, mostly because you, well, my theory is I want my kids to have an opportunity to go to college if they want to. I don't think college is for everyone. 
some people think, oh, most homeschoolers don't send their kids to college. My kids have gone to college and I'm really glad because they are doing jobs that really require a college education, which not all jobs do. But with that in mind, again, I outline the steps in the book, but knowing what you need to get your kids into college isn't too hard, but there's a couple of things you need to do. So, so again, they're in the book. You can look at what your public school requires for graduation and kind of model after that, at least look at like, what would they be taking in a freshman year in high school if they went to a public school? And you can kind of use that to help you if you're like, I just need to know what they need right now. Um, but ultimately, to quote, graduate from high school as a homeschooler, there, for most states, there are no academic requirements. And that blows people's mind because they think you can actually graduate a child doing whatever you want. It's more, do you want them to go to college or not? And that's where the best thing you can do is go to the colleges your kid might be interested in, go to a couple of them and just see what their requirements are and then model your high school education after that. Different colleges have different requirements. Some have more math or more English or more whatever. Just take a look, let that guide you, but don't stress. You got plenty of time. And I'll add there that my two oldest sons both took a gap year. So that mm-hmm. allowed them to kind yeah. of catch their breath and figure things out before they dove into the college years. And that can be helpful as well. Yeah. Well, there's so many options nowadays. You can do, if you didn't quite hit the math or the writing you needed, you could do a year at a community college before Absolutely. heading. Absolutely. I mean, there's Absolutely. so many great opportunities. There's dual enrollment you can do now. Like yes. so many cool. great things that give you so many options that you don't have to do it all. And that's what I hear yeah. a lot from moms who are like, well, I can't teach advanced algebra. Right. Well, you yeah. don't have to. You don't exactly. have to. <laughs> exactly. Thank God. I mean, I yes. my kids surpassed me like by their ninth grade year. And you mentioned dual enrollment. I mean, those are the things that, again, I confess, I didn't even understand all that when my boys were going through high school. But if you're smart, if you're starting this before your kids are in high school, dual enrollment is something you should yeah. not pass up because you can literally graduate a homeschool kid with their first two years of college under their belt save a ton of money, send them to college, and they've already covered that for high school and college. So yeah, there's there's plenty um, of options that are not too difficult. So yeah, that's yeah. actually, that's what my husband did. He did dual enrollment for his junior and senior year of high school. And he had um, of a AA degree when he graduated yeah. high school. And there for you go. a lot of those programs, they, they will pay the tuition, the state pays uh-huh. the tuition. And exactly. it, so it's like, he had all of these college credits for free. He had to buy the textbook still, but, and they counted the dual enrollment counts for your high school algebra and the college algebra. You have to take it anyway. So it's a no brainer. It makes sense. Yes. And it gives kids an opportunity to interact with a college professors, whether it's online or in person. Some people go to a community college Mm -hmm. while they're homeschooling. I think that's a great way to transition, have a little more independence. Um, but again, I'll say my first son didn't do that. Yeah, He got to college and he's like, mom, all my friends have like a bunch of credits because they went to maybe a public school that did the same kind of program. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm, like, I'm so sorry. You're my guinea pig. I didn't know what I was doing, but now I know my youngest will be doing that. Well, you know, that's where though, this is an important topic in this is that we have to trust the Lord in the process too. Yeah. That was not actually the wrong thing for your oldest son. That was You're exactly right. the path. <laughs> yes. to on. Yes. And we have to remember that too. Our oldest are always going to be our guinea pigs in a lot of ways, <laughs> right? figuring things yeah. out. But God knew exactly who that child was supposed to be, that he'd be mm-hmm. your firstborn, that, you know, that that is the exact path he's supposed to walk. And that can take so much freedom off of us as as moms too, is we don't have to do it all right and know all the things. And in fact, we're not going to, exactly. but we can trust the Lord in that and yeah. rest in that and say, we can do what we can do. And yeah. we trust the Lord with everything else. Totally. And I think that same message is important for those parents who are um, not homeschooling yet, but thinking about it and yeah. feeling like, oh, have I missed the boat? Have I blown yeah. it? No, you're right where God wants you to be. You didn't yeah. know a year yeah. ago what you know today. Uh, you're a different person. God has you in a different place. So just um, rest, rest in that. Yeah, that's important. Okay. So this question I have, I love. So my oldest twins are 11. They are starting sixth grade. We're starting that middle school years. 
Uh, and I definitely, I very much look at middle school as a big transition. So Huge. elementary school, we're way looser. We're exploring. We're having fun. Middle school starts to be more independent studies. We're adding a few more things on getting prepared to step into high school and get all right. that. So, but also we know middle school is the hormones and the, in the just Everything. craziness. Like yeah. I look back, I went to public school, but I look back on my middle school years and I oh. did them like awful. I would not want to relive those years <laughs> for anything. Never. No. Never. So in your book though, you talk about how middle school is one of your favorite ages. So why don't you share yes. a little bit about that? Yes. I say it's my favorite age for everyone but me because <laughs> I wouldn't want to relive it. No. But you know, as a mom, especially since I have four sons, I just look at those middle schoolers and all their awkward, funny, quirky, cute, you know, they're just, it's such a precious time. And I've got one in it right now. And he's just such a hilarious 13 year old. But uh, I do take a minute in the book. So the middle section of the book is preschool to college, as you know, and it's really covering each stage. So wherever a parent is, I cover what you need to know for that stage. And in the middle school section, I take a minute and pause. And I really ask parents who are reading the book to consider everything that's going on with the middle schooler, because I think that lays an important foundation for this idea of should I homeschool? And second, if I'm homeschooling, what's going on? So that's where I talk about developmentally what's happening, uh, puberty, about their physical changes, about their mental changes, because I think that's super important to keep in mind. For one, because of all these things, I think middle school is probably the very most important time you can homeschool. So if a parent asks me if I'm just gonna pull my kid for a year or two, when should I do it? Middle school, that would be my answer. Um, Of course, I think you should do it all the way through if you can, (laughs) but middle school for sure. And then as you're homeschooling in middle school, be aware, like I'm watching my son go through these bizarre kind of highs and lows and he'll get super hyper and then he'll be like in tears. And I'm like, yeah, you're 13. There is a lot going on. So it helps me be a little bit more tuned in to him. But also, like you said, it's a great time to increase their independent workload to expect a little bit more to raise that standard and say, you know, the bar is here because if you want to give them a good high school education, it's going to be a huge adjustment. So you need to prepare them. So I think middle school is a really important time in the homeschool um, lifestyle. Yeah. And we've noticed with our 11 year olds, there's this, there's this extra step up lately of wanting more responsibility too. Mm -hmm. There are, when we present more responsibility, not always, but they often are rising to that occasion then. And it's one of those, it's one of these times right now that I realize if I'm not pretty like intentional about this, I could really miss it. And I could still treat them like they're fourth graders and they're not. And I need to work on that trans again, that transition of little kid to teenager to adult. And we're in that awkward, you're not either yet. And so treating them older and giving them more responsibility, responsibility, expecting more from them. Um, Mm -hmm. it's just a bit, you know, we're trying to figure that out too, is where is that and not expecting too much and, you know, being kind of in that middle. No, I love it. And I would say that is one benefit of homeschooling is you really can do that because I think in our school system, often kids just have such a, um, you know, they're really told hour by hour where to be, what to do, and they don't really have that opportunity to take ownership and to grow up and become, I mean, as we all know, in other cultures, by 13, a boy is looked at as a young man, and we still treat them like kids. And in the schools, it's oftentimes all the way through high school, they are spoon fed everything hour by hour. And my sons in college have said they felt much more prepared for the college life than their friends who went to a traditional school, because they, in my son's words, he's like, college was a lot like homeschooling. I had to organize my own schedule. Everything was up to me, what I did with my day and how much I put things off. Whereas other kids came out of a situation where they were told where to be every hour of every day. So yeah, I think giving them more independence, more um, higher standards is going to be really helpful in those middle school years. Yeah. A lot of people will, you know, have wonder, they'll wonder, will my student be ready for college if they homeschool? Will they, you know, almost feeling like you're going to give a worse education at home, which I don't think is true. Yeah, And um, we saw this firsthand when my husband was in, we were married in college. So he was um, going through, he has a a degree in mathematics, which is so gross to me, (laughs) (laughs) but he loves it. And he was in his senior year and he was offered a full-time job. 
And we were, it was an amazing job, but it was during the day where his classes were. So he went to his, the dean of his college and said, Hey, is there any way I can move these classes, take them independent? And I mean, these are like senior level, crazy math in college. Yeah, I can imagine. And his professor, he'd had a couple of classes with the dean and the dean said, you know what? If this was almost any other kid, I would say no, but because you were homeschooled, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. you can do this on your own. And I, yeah, I mean, and if you fail the class, you fail the class, but like, I'm going to trust you that, yeah, I'm going to let you do this. And it was like such a blessing from the Lord. It's, I mean, it got him into his career. It was what we needed, Yes. but he, the Dean recognized, like, Mm -hmm. you know how to work on your own. Like even by whatever 22 that he was, it was still. Yes. I love that story so much. And more and more today, finally, colleges are recognizing uh, you know, the difference between homeschool students and more and more homeschool students are being recruited by colleges because they yeah. see that they're not only self-directed learners, but they're they're great in the college community. They yeah. tend to really add a lot of value to college campuses. So I love that that's starting to be recognized. Yeah, it's not a negative to be homeschooled. Mm-hmm. And that's what right. often, you know, we associate with. And so it's, I it. think it's helpful to hear those stories. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, so you may have already kind of answered this, So my last question for you, moving through the ages, um, is what should homeschool parents know about transitioning then into high school? We've worked our way up. We're heading into high school. What do we need to know? Yeah, I think that you want to have a game plan. I I have been really saddened by a few families. You know, I do live in Hawaii where there's a pretty laid back, especially the area of the island I live on. It's a surf community. (laughs) <laughs> so there's not a ton of ambitious kids, you know, heading off to Ivy League or anything like that, but there's a few. But what has made me sad is the families who are like, oh, yeah, my son's not cut out for college. My nah. And then it's his senior year. And the son is like, actually, I want to go to college. And they're like, oh, shoot, I haven't kept records. Yeah. I don't like what are your options in? Thankfully, usually you can still figure it out and get them into a community college, which is often a great way to start. But for those who might have had an opportunity, they're smart kids. They could have had a scholarship. They could have gone on to have some great experience. But because of the parents, and this is where I'm going to acknowledge with the outside world who judges homeschoolers, I do see that as a concern. I think parents ought to be responsible if you're going to choose to homeschool to give them at least what they would get if they went to a public school, which means check those boxes, make sure it's not hard, but you really want to make sure you're doing what is required for your child to go to college if they so choose. I think that's just our responsibility as parents who choose to homeschool. So with that, again, my book covers it all. There's no stress. You can do it, but you want to figure out what needs to be done. I recommend just a big calendar. I actually give one with the book. I have on the resource list things you can print out. So I have a calendar where you just jot in loosely your basic plan for your kids, talk to friends. Um, There are online places that you can meet with or for almost free. Some of them are free. You can get the help planning your child's high school journey, and then creating a transcript, which will be sent off to colleges. And it's not as daunting or hard as people imagine, but you do need to do your due diligence. Yeah, I I love that advice. And just setting them up for their options. Not every kid needs to go to college. Some kids are going to head off to trade schools. There are so many options out there, but you don't want to determine that in eighth or ninth grade, exactly Exactly. what they're going to do, because you don't know what the next four or five years are going to bring. And so keeping those options open. Yep. It's just going to serve that kid well, and it's not going to hurt them either having right. taken those classes and things exactly. like that. Exactly. It's good for them. Yes. Yes. And then to explore too, like what would you need to do if your kid's interested in in becoming, a, you know, whatever trade it might be yep. or the military, look into all the options. And these are great conversations. These help your kid grow up with a vision for where they're headed. So I think talking to your child Uh, from eighth grade on about the future, not in a way that overwhelms them, but in a way that's realistic and preparing them to be independent in a few years. Yeah. Well, that's what homeschooling allows us to do. And this is where we need to talk about how great the opportunities are. Like we Mm -hmm. have at our church, we have um, a man who's a veterinarian. He's almost about to retire. And he has already offered for our sons that if any of your, for our older ones, if any of them are interested 
in veterinary school, they can come start shadowing me, come shadow a day or two. You know, it's, it's those kind of opportunities that are, you know, and my one son, he is convinced he's going to be a farmer. Like he has all these plans. He's like a little entrepreneur. He's got all these things and he is out in the garden every day. He's like, mom, I need wood because I need to build this thing. And like being and who knows, who knows at 11. I love it though. But getting to explore that now, getting to start, like he's got plans. He wants to set up a little farmer's market when he's 15. You know, he's got all these things he wants to do. Let him explore that now. And it may fizzle or it might turn into his lifelong passion. And so getting to explore these different areas, do these different things. That's part of the absolute freedom that we have in homeschooling that is so amazing that you don't get. And I will tell you now, you'll be surprised at how many of these things he's doing now will look really good on his college applications. They love to hear that he was thinking about, you know, farming and setting up entrepreneurial, you know, ideas from a young age. That's something he wouldn't be able to do if he was sitting in a classroom all day, every day. So keep it up. Yeah, I remember when when I was applying to college in public school, you know, filling in those like extra things that you're you're passionate about, and like Uh I had nothing. Like I don't know. Like I went to school every day. You know, like there was no. I had nothing special to add, and so it's neat to be able to have have anything. You know, and a lot of people do sports, but I wasn't into sports, and you know, but there's extra. uh, I'll also add to that just because uh, my son did just graduate from college with a mechanical engineering major. But he also was offered a job right in his last week before he graduated. And we've been trying to figure out why, because it was a job that there were hundreds of applicants for. My son didn't have a 4.0 in college. He did well, but not that well. And my husband and I are pretty convinced it's just how well-rounded he was. He really had a variety of interests that all started homeschooling. And I think that that was appealing to an engineering company because they have a lot of people who are great at math who are great students, who did well academically, but how many of them have that well-rounded picture that shows that they're really going to be quality people who add a lot to a company. So that's our theory. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I think, so my husband and I talk about this a lot, that our kids are going to be set up really well for the workforce. Because when my husband and I graduated college, it was right in the 2008 crazy recession. And, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, you poor things starting out in this recession. For us, it wasn't because we got any job we applied for because it we just had, and we didn't feel like we were amazing, but we yeah. had really good work ethic and we yeah. showed up in a way that our peers were not. And yeah. when we look at this generation, our younger kids are growing up in, I just think, oh, the, the world is going to be their oyster. Even if the economy is not doing well, they show up, they can speak, they can work hard. Like they're going to be, they're going to be fine. And yes. we have to see that difference too, that they're yes. going to be different than their peers in really good ways that are Amen. not the negative, awkward stereotypes. Oh my goodness. To home yeah. school, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. And amen. I love it. Keep it up. You're doing a great job. Proud of you. <laughs> one, one day at a time, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, why don't you share a little bit about your book? Um, I am about 80% of the way through it. So I'm not quite done, but I have absolutely loved it. I have read many homeschooling books and there are some really terrific resources out there, Mm -hmm. but I've never found a homeschool book that I could just hand to someone who is like, I'm kind of interested. I don't know what to do Mm -hmm. and say, here, Mm -hmm. read this. And it's not overwhelming. It covers a ton, but it's not like going to bog you down and make you pull your hair out because it's so scary and overwhelming. Like it's a simple guide to get going. So. I have loved it. So why don't you, now that I've shared it all, why don't you share? Uh, Yeah, no, thank you so much. Yes. The heart of the book was, was pretty much nailing what you just said, because I, as a homeschool mom have a lot of homeschool books and they do overwhelm me even as a homeschool mom, (laughs) just because I wasn't that crunchy trying to create a magical homeschool experience for my kids. That wasn't ever my, my dream. I just wanted to give them the best I could. And I mean, I don't want to say the minimal, but I wanted to know what what I had to do. And then anything on top of that was just, you know, the icing on the cake. So I wanted to create a resource for all the parents out there who are like, just tell me what I need to do. Of course, our story's in there. Um, I also thought it would be helpful to the first chapter is 20 good reasons to homeschool. I just want to, I think a lot of even homeschoolers are reading that and they're being reminded of like, oh yeah, this is why I do it. Oh my goodness. That is another good reason. And it's everything from 
the relationships we develop, the faith you can really um, build at home, as well as things, you know, that that are like academics and college uh, preparation and all of that. Um, also, I address the reasons most people don't homeschool or would choose not to. And some of them are reasonable. And I, I like to acknowledge that. I'm like, I'm not going to say homeschooling is for everyone, though I think a lot more people would do it if they tried it. And so I kind of do that. And with all the big sister love, I say, I, I call some people's bluff on some of them that I think are reasons that probably aren't good enough. Like, yeah, that that might make homeschooling hard, but it shouldn't prevent you from homeschooling. So the first part of the book is really all of that. It's just kind of helping you make that decision. Should I, shouldn't I, is it for me or not? And then I go into what we already talked about, all the stages from preschool to college. And then at the end, I cover all those topics that just come up like sports. Can my kid do sports if they're homeschooled? Um, electives, co-ops, dual enrollment, all the things that kind of are those lingering questions. I cover all of that in the third section of the book. And then like we've mentioned, there's a huge resource section where I just point people. I'm like, I don't have all the answers, but I know people who do. So I found them for you. They're all here and you can get all those resources. So that's the heart of the book. I really did it out of love for people who are fearful and nervous and on the fence and not sure. And I just want to hold their hand and say, yeah, let's do this. It's going to be the greatest thing you ever did. Uh, but also acknowledging if you choose not to, I respect you. I, I say in the book, as much as I'm pro homeschooling, I'm even more pro family and I want families to know I love and support them. And I trust you to do what's right for your family. Yeah. It's definitely, like I said, it's beginner. Like you can hand it to someone who just is like, what is all this? But mm -hmm. me, I'm not a beginner homeschooler and reading through the different, I especially love the chapters of like, what do you do for preschool, elementary yeah, school, yeah. middle school, high school, like each that chap, those chapters broken down. There's so much encouragement within that of me reading it going, okay, I just got through elementary for the first time. I've got several in elementary. We're starting middle school. Like yeah. it's encouraging. Yeah. Whereas like I had just recently read a different homeschool book and there were some great nuggets in it, but mm -hmm. I did walk away feeling like utterly overwhelmed because mm -hmm. it was so many, we do things, we do a lot of things, mm -hmm. but then this book was so many different things that we don't do. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. no. And so if, if for seasoned, for beginner homeschoolers, like your book is just a great resource for. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> All I'm right, really so, happy with how it turned out. I feel like I'm, I've done what I set out to do and that feels really yeah. good. Yeah, that's awesome. So the book is called Beginning Ho Becoming Homeschoolers. Becoming Homeschoolers. Okay, and we can find it just everywhere, Amazon, all the places. It is, it is out there everywhere, Audible, um, as well as Kindle and paperback. So yes. Awesome. And then your website is, B no. MonicaSwanson.com is my website. And there at the website, of course, you'll find links to the book, to my podcast, and everything else. So yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll put those links down in the show notes. So Monica, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun.